The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I'm Father Mike Danderan, the pastor at Holy Trinity Parish in Assumption, Ohio. And right behind me, the most significant event of your life takes place each day here and every weekend. We're about to journey for six weeks into fellowship, into getting deeper into the scripture of the upcoming Sunday, as well as studying and discussing parts of the holy sacrifice of the Mass so that each time we gather, we get more out of the Mass. You know, you are made for love. You are made to be loved and you are made to love. The deepest longing of our soul is for that. And the one who made us desires the same. Do you believe that you can have a personal relationship of love in Jesus Christ? Statistics would question that as many as 40% of Catholics, those who gather with us in these pews, 40% do not believe that they can have a personal, loving relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to propose to you that at the Mass, the encounter of love is made present to us in the sacrament of love, the Eucharist. So we both have a quick story about adoration. And very simply, adoration is adoring Christ in the Eucharist. And it can be done quietly, it can be done with music, it can be done in outward prayer, and it is absolutely amazing. breathtaking, wonderful, awesome. Um, it's amazing the wisdom that's spoken to you in the silence, and I recommend it for everyone. So Liz went to Chirp, how long ago? So, I was trying to think about this, I think it's been about 13 years ago, I did Chirp, um, and I am a cradle Catholic, and I have never even heard of adoration. It was my very first experience, like 23 years old or something like that. That's, that's pathetic. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. So at nighttime, you know, they make you sleep in this little room with all these women, all ages, sizes, shapes, whatever. And so there's a lot of women that were like snoring really, really loud. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how I, I need to get some sleep. And, Nothing um, like a snoring woman. And this was before I had kids, so I didn't know how to deal with the lack of sleep thing. So anyways, I decided to take my sleeping bag and go and sleep outside of the Adoration Chapel. And so I had had my first Adoration experience that, that day, um, so prior to sleeping outside of the chapel. So I put my um, sleeping bag down, and I lay down, and I'm laying there, and I'm praying, and I had this great sense of love. I have never felt like that in my whole life, just... God's love pouring down upon me, like holding me tight, and I had goosebumps, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my whole life. So um, that was my first uh, real experience with adoration. Hmm. Well, I think to, to gain the most, to give the most and receive the most out of adoration, you have to believe. You have to believe that Christ is truly present. If you do believe, it means everything. And to be quite honest, um, sometimes my belief is weak, and sometimes my belief is strong. And when I go into adoration, I pray, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And every time I leave, I just know he's there. I know he's present, and I know he's there. And I don't dwell on what I can't understand. I try to listen to what he wants me to hear. So for me, um, when my wife asked me to start going to adoration, to consider going to adoration at Holy Trinity, I said, sure, absolutely. Uh, opportunity for quiet, and in our house it is not quiet. <laughs> and it's an opportunity to think, it's an opportunity to ask God a lot of questions. It's an opportunity to listen. Um, and it's an opportunity to be with him one-on-one -on -one 
in the most beautiful place you can possibly imagine here on earth, which is in church. And from being a spouse and seeing him going every week, I've seen greater peace, um, a better sense of reliability or relying on God rather than himself. Um, so, and I know with me, with six littles, we go to adoration too, but I, I haven't had the joy of having too much of the quiet, peaceful adoration when you have to figure out how we've done that. Um, so a lot of times I have my six littles, and it's about 10, 15 minutes, and teaching them how to pray before the Eucharist and trying to teach them the real presence of the Eucharist. And something that was really helpful for me um, when the girls were going through First Communion, uh, Father Mike gave them this, little, this book. It's called The Little Catechism on the Eucharist. And in there, there is a ton of stories about Eucharistic miracles. And that's something that was uh, really helped enhance my belief was to read these scientific, you know, because we nowadays have to <laughs> know prove everything, it. prove everything, um, the real presence of Jesus. And I know that Father Mike talked about this recently in the Mass, also told a story. It was just amazing and fantastic and awesome. So I hope you all have the opportunity to take the opportunity. I challenge you to take the opportunity to go to adoration and spend that time with them and love the Lord. It's a good place to learn. It's the closest you can be to heaven here on earth. God bless you all. As a priest, a number of years ago, I was introduced to the concept of children's adoration. The idea of bringing before our Eucharistic Lord, uh, children as young as five, six, seven, eight years old, bringing them before the Eucharist and inviting them to pray silently or in song or out loud. When this first introduced to me, I thought it was crazy. I could hardly get adults to come to adoration. And here I'm supposed to somehow lead children through adoration by the grace of the Holy Spirit or the prompting or the kicking of the shins of parishioners. I, I did it. It's powerful, really powerful. These small children, whether in kindergarten or first grade or second or third, you know, I brought them before Jesus at the altar. You know, and there he is, our Eucharistic Lord in the monstrum. And as I had the kids draw near, I asked them to come up to the altar, to kneel down. And I would say to them, hey, take your eyes and look. Look at the very center and see not just this white host, but I want you to see Jesus. I want you to talk to Jesus. Now repeat after me, looking at Jesus. I ask the kids, look to Jesus. Thou tell Jesus, I love you. And they will look up and say, I love you. And I say to the children, now, now look up. Look again, because they don't keep looking. They get distracted. Look one more time. Now tell Jesus, you adore him. I adore you. It's beautiful. And those words spoken were words of truth for those children. You could see it in their eyes. But I was overwhelmed with the realization at that moment, too, that unless that is truly God on the altar, if it is just a symbol of God, if it is just a piece of bread, I, as a priest, have led these precious souls in idolatry. It must be God because adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is deep and rich within our Catholic tradition. It's not something Mike Dandoran came up with. I'm not that smart. And so adoration of the Blessed Sacrament revealed at a deeper, more profound level for me that the Eucharist is a living God that I encounter. I know when we come to Mass, we come to Mass and at times we might struggle with distraction. But when we walk through the doors of the church, my friends, prepare for an encounter at the deepest long, of the deepest level of the longing of your soul. Remember, you are made for love. You are made to love. And God, who is love, desires to love you and to be loved by you. And in the Eucharist, as Catholics, we have one of the most special ways to encounter that outpouring of love. The Father loving us through the Son and the Son giving himself to us in Holy Eucharist, 
the bread and wine, it's transformed at the Mass. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the words of the priest, that bread and wine on the altar, it's no longer bread and wine. It's the living God. It's Jesus come down from heaven so that his words in the gospel may be fulfilled, that we will have life in him when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, that we will encounter him and the depth of his love in the Holy Eucharist. This is what happens at the Mass. So yes, you can have a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ because you're made for that. And God has made you for that. And God desires that for you. This relationship is enriched, sustained, fueled by the Holy Eucharist. When you come forward, folks, come forward with real intention. I know the possibility that the deceiver is trying to distract us from this encounter of love. So we're walking down the aisle. The kids might be distracting us. Our mind might be on the breakfast that follows the mass. It might be on the next activities that await us. It might be on this or that. All those are distractions placed before us by the deceiver to remove us from what is true, the encounter with the living God in Holy Eucharist. This encounter with the living God, though, compels us to live a relationship in him. And as we live that relationship in him, we not only want to receive him, we would desire to spend time with him, just to adore him. He gives himself completely to us in Holy Communion. We're the recipients. Can we not give him something back? And all he would want for us to give back is our love, our devotion, our adoration. And that's why reception of Holy Communion warrants, and maybe that's a little soft, demands that we spend time with him in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. The spiritual vitality of a parish, I'm convinced, is does that parish foster and engage in Eucharistic adoration? Are the parishioners compelled to come back to church at some point during the week or the month to spend time in loving and adoring the God who loves them in the Holy Eucharist? Now, I'm sure your parishes, but here at Holy Trinity, we offer 24 hour of adoration, Tuesday into Wednesday. People will gather in church throughout those 24 hours at the oddest hours of the night to spend time with him. Our monthly Wednesday adoration to give praise and worship for an hour together. It's beautiful adoration. In fact, at the end of our summer session, a small group, we're going to invite all of you to gather with Mass Impact as they host for us adoration of the Eucharistic Lord who loves us. They will host Ignite and we'll gather here in this church and the God whom we received will be the God whom we adore on the altar. I invite you in your small groups to talk and share with each other those moments in your life where you really realized that God's loving you, just as you are, calling you to something more. If you haven't had that experience, be honest, be vulnerable, and share that. Those members of the group love you, you can trust them. Share with each other best practices of how to engage the reverent reception of Holy Communion. Share with each other those occasions where you've had those moments to spend time in adoration of the Lord. Thank you for joining me again on our fifth session. I look forward to gathering with you one more time as we dwell, dwell ever deeper on the great mystery and the meaning of the Mass. Until then, we'll see you in church. Thank you.